Hi, this is Melissa from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and you're listening to Two Broads Talking Politics. Tonight truly is Two Broads Talking Politics, because unfortunately, Kelly has some laryngitis. So it's just your trusty old host, Sophie, here tonight. But I have a very special guest with me to make it Two Broads. Christine Marsh, she is both the Arizona State 2016 Teacher of the Year and a candidate for State Senate from District 28 in Arizona. Welcome, Christine. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be part of this. Thank you for being here. Can you sort of just give us a little introduction to to yourself? Tell us a little bit about who you are and why you are running for state senate in Arizona. Yes, I just started my 27th year of teaching last week. I, as you already said, I'm the 2016 Teacher of the Year. I've got my own two sons who are 23 and 25, and I'm a former foster mother and. The reason I'm running is because while traveling the state as Teacher of the Year, I already knew that things were bleak in Arizona, but that experience made me realize that it's far more bleak than even I had thought. And that experience also provided me the opportunity to spend a whole lot of time with the other state Teachers of the Year from across the nation. And I recognize that it does not have to be this way. Like other states are doing it better and different. So I am running to change things. So can you just sort of tell us a little bit about what the situation is in Arizona about education? You said it was bleak. Can you sort of paint a picture for us? Yeah, we have the fourth highest or second, depending on your source, class size in the nation. We have the lowest elementary school teacher pay second lowest high school teacher pay. We have somewhere between 47 and 52, like even behind D.C., as far as per pupil funding. And I give that range because, again, it depends on your source. But I have not seen us placed above 47. So we do not fund our school very well. We finished the school year with a 2,000 teacher shortage which means that there are roughly 60,000 kids who finish the year without an actual teacher in their class. And that's being very conservative because 30, I do, you know, most of us do not have only 30 kids in our class. So I'm being really conservative by saying 60,000 kids. You know, the classrooms are just filled beyond capacity. We have, just at lunch this week, one of my teacher friends was saying that She has physically no more room in her classroom for another desk. So there's going to be one student who has to sit on the floor. Like if all kids are there, somebody's going to be on the floor because there's just no more room. And I, you know, our kids deserve better than that. And what sorts of ideas do you have for how the state Senate could sort of impact education in Arizona? Is it mainly like a funding issue or are there other things that you can be doing? I think the biggest one right now is simple funding. That's another thing that I learned through my experience as Teacher of the Year was I was fighting for the entire year. I did an ungodly number of speeches, and it was all about, like, let's just make sure things don't get worse, whereas in other states, those Teachers of the Year were doing productive, positive-moving things like anti-bullying campaigns and music across the curriculum and early childhood literacy, that kind of thing. So back to your question, yeah, the biggest thing before we can even see beyond that is to just get an adequate amount of funding in the classroom. And then I'd like to go forward. I'd like to see something, some kind of legislation that would reduce class size, for example. I mean, I know Florida does it. Other states have been able to do that. But for right now, we just need we need dollars in the classroom, period. Tell us a little bit about becoming 2016 Teacher of the Year. Like sort of how 
how does that happen and what is that experience like? My principal nominated me and once a person is nominated, the onus falls on the person to write about, it was about 12 to 14 pages of essays answering different prompts about the state of education and, you know, what good teaching is and, you know, things like that. Uh, Based on the essays, the judges bring in 10 to interview. And then based on the interviews, the winner is actually chosen. And the experience itself was quite amazing. It was, I'd say, life-changing. We all got to go to the White House, for example, and meet President Obama we got a bigger platform. I mean, and for me, that was the, I loved meeting Obama and we actually got to meet Vice President Biden and his wife, Jill, at their actual house. And I mean, so there were really (sighs) cool experiences like that. But, uh, you know, for me, the best part, the most special part was just having that broader platform from which to advocate for teachers and students across the state. Like, I really valued that, and I tried to take advantage of it as much as possible. Like, I did not say no to really any interviews or speaking mm-hmm. engagements or whatever. Every opportunity that I could use to speak on behalf of teachers and students, I made sure to to do it. And you are running for District 28 in Arizona for the State Senate. Can you tell us a little bit about your district, sort of... What towns and areas are in the district? What What's it like? So my legislative district is one of the most purple in the state. There's a lot of Republicans, a lot of independents, a lot of Democrats. So most of the legislative districts in the state lean really hard one direction or the other. Super red or super blue. So mine is kind of, it's, you know, right pretty much in the middle. We have a very large pocket of what I would consider affluence. Uh, But then we also have some very impoverished areas as well. I mean, we, we have the entire range of socioeconomic status represented by our district. It's a, a high voter turnout district, which is good. I mean, and I think that's Mm -hmm. the work of the legislative district, like for all the years, leading up to now for the last, you know, 10 to 12 years, the amount of door knocking that goes on, the amount of voter engagement. So we usually have the first or second highest rate of voting of the 30 districts in the state. Oh, nice. Yeah, no, it's it's great. Uh, I love, you know, I love my legislative district and I've lived here other than going to college in California. I've, you know, grown up here, raised my kids here. My roots are very deep in this legislative district. And it looks like the current Republican incumbent, Kate McGee, she was only elected in 2016, and she only won by about 3% of the vote. Correct. Correct. So what do you see sort of as your strategy, as your path to victory? Our path to victory is knocking a lot of doors. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have an amazing field operations I was actually at our campaign office before coming home to uh, take this call. We are raising a lot of money as well, of course, but we uh, probably, I mean, we do not have any, whatever, delusions that we're going to outraise the Republicans Mm -hmm. in the race. Um, But we are able to knock on a lot of doors and talk to a lot of people. We make a lot of phone calls. I mean, the office that we have is just bustling, and there's former students of mine there and all kinds of young people. I've been Mm -hmm. super inspired by that, by the way. I know that's a digression, but I've never in Mm -hmm. 27 years of teaching seen this level of engagement from our young folks. And when I say our office, I'm running with Kelly Butler and Aaron Lieberman. They are both running for the House, and I'm running for the Senate. So the three of us, we are a cohesive team. Cool. And it looks like you've gotten some pretty high profile endorsements as well. You've been endorsed by Emily's List. You've been endorsed by the Arizona, is it the Fund for Education? Arizona yes. Education Association, that's what it is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does that mean to you? 
all of the endorsements are special, but mm-hmm. as a teacher, the one from Arizona Education Association was even more special. Mm-hmm. Like that one really means a lot to me. From, from behind the scenes, something that people don't realize is, oh my gosh, candidates, we get so much paperwork to fill out for all of those endorsements. Like, it is incredible. That was something that nobody warned me about. I did not know how much writing and surveys uh, that we had to fill out, which is fine. I'm not saying that as a complaint. I'm just saying it as I just didn't know that part. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned knocking on a lot of doors in in the process of talking to voters in your in your district. What sorts of issues have they brought up to you as being really important to them? Across the board is education. Mm-hmm. And I often wonder if it's because all of my literature says, you know, teacher of the year. And but talking to all the other canvassers of whom we have, you know, so many that seems to be consistent, not just with me. But yeah, that is, I'd say, 96% of the people. I mean, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'd have to actually run the stats. But just as mm-hmm. a guess, it's, it's got to be somewhere around, you know, 95, 96% of the people think that education is the number one issue here in Arizona. Mm-hmm. After that comes health care, immigration, the environment, the economy, and those all are probably pretty closely bunched together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, c- criminal justice, which is also on our like survey of you know the data we're collecting at the doors, rarely comes up, which surprised me. I thought that one would come up a little bit more, but. Mm-hmm. Um, and the environment comes up more than I had expected, which is good. I'm very glad that our voters are very in tune with what's happening, you know, with the environment. And that might look different. I mean, one voter might say we need more sustainable energy. Somebody else might specifically mention solar energy. Somebody else might mention the fact that we are heading into a drought and, you know, our water issues, which are indeed very pressing but I consider those all under that broader umbrella of the environment. Yeah, I was going to say, don't you in Arizona have some some water issues? I know when I I lived in New Mexico, a little bit across the border from Arizona, and we had a lot of water issues when I lived in New Mexico. Yes, it's already an issue, and uh, we are looking at some serious problems within the next five to six Mm -hmm. years. We're looking at some serious issues if we don't do something and act, you know, don't do something to slow down our use of water. Well, is there anything else you want to make sure that we talk about, about your campaign or about, you know, education in general as, as an issue? There's two things. I mm-hmm. don't know why people don't recognize the importance of students. Like every year, with every class, I think to myself that the future president could be sitting in my room because mm-hmm. the future president is sitting in someone's classroom right now. And, you know, I use that as a metaphor. Of course, it had a whole different level of meaning for our current president, but whatever. <laughs> Nonetheless, I, um, I and it just seems to me that that is something that too many people are not paying attention to, like, Our kids are going to grow up and be our president and our doctors and our our lawyers and our, you know, all of our health care providers, our accountants. I mean, you name it, they're going to be it. And why we wouldn't do absolutely everything to ensure them having a successful future, I just simply don't understand. Because their successful future is also our successful future. Mm -hmm. And. I just don't see nearly enough people who seem to respect that idea. Well, and you would think that since the vast majority of us have been students before, you would think education would be something that touches everyone and that is really interesting to everyone. Correct. Or at least a public education system. I mean, in Arizona, 
the big push is the privatization of public mm-hmm. education. And, you know, I'm 